Windows 1903, with its recent announcement and release, you guys have requested that I do an optimization guide, which I've done, and I'll put the link up here for that. But also on top of that, there's a heap of new changes that didn't get mentioned in that guide. And today we're gonna to go through all those different changes, starting with appearance. First up here, we have the new optional light theme. It actually looks pretty cool, if you don't mind me saying, and Windows Explorer also has a new icon, and the power menu has received icons too, which will have a small orange dot if there's an update pending. There's a new default wallpaper too. So this is actually welcomed in the fact that you know that you've actually updated to 1903 when in previous Windows versions, if you've updated, you're like, okay, am I actually on the new Windows update or not? This wallpaper officially lets you know that Microsoft is mining your data yet again. On top of that, you've also got a new look game bar, but you can also change your pointer color in the settings to custom colors. Wow. But what else is new in these changes? Let's roll that intro and also today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, where if you want a legit Windows 10 Pro key, you can get it for as little as $13 by using the coupon code TYCSK from the link in the description below. With that aside, let's get on with the setting app changes here and the storage page is now more visual to show what is taking up space. There's also been more work towards merging control panels into the settings apps themselves. So you don't have to go down and find individual setting menus that have sort of been fragmented in previous versions of Windows, but there's also a drag and drop now to install fonts. This does make life a bit easier, I guess. And then next up, we've got the microphone icon in the taskbar, which shows you when it's being used. So you visually know that your microphone's turned on or off, and if apps are actually using that in the background too. The camera page in the app settings is also showing now which apps are using that camera, whether it be actively or passively. And you can now configure a static IP and DNS server address for ethernet connections in the property page. But moving along, you can also have defragmentation available through the storage page of the settings app. Also setting up the alternate sign-in options is now more clear. There's also a new search section in the settings app to control if explicit content will be shown and if it will search the cloud. So those parents that love a particular type of video might now have some layer of protection. There's also added options and information about indexing on Windows and a new voice activation page in the settings app to control settings is also available. There's the new phone calls page to allow or block apps from making phone calls. If you're using this device, uh, for instance, with an eSIM or a SIM card, that may help uh, actively manage your Windows phone. However, moving now onto keyboard tweaks, touch input. So if you're on a tablet with a touch screen, this will now adjust the hitbox of your virtual keyboard to pretty much optimize the accuracy, making it easier. Also holding down the Windows key and pressing the dot at the same time now brings you up a panel supporting the Emoji 12 standard. Windows keyboard now also includes symbols and Windows can optionally suggest auto corrections for a physical keyboard. There's also new phonetic keyboards for Hindi, Bangla, Tamil, Marathi, Punjabi, Gujarati, Odia, Telugu, Kannada, and Mayalai. I, I butchered the pronunciation here, guys, so I'm just gonna put them up on the screen for you. But there's also support for Adlam, Osage, Vietnamese, Telex, and VNI number-based inputs. Moving on to features, there's the Sandbox On Demand VM for running apps securely and independently. There's also the new clipboard history tool, Windows Plus V. I actually really love this because I do copy paste things a lot and having a record and being able to select things that I copy pasted three copy pastes ago makes life a lot easier. You can now also launch desktop, and I'm pretty sure this means the Microsoft Store, applications in mixed reality, such as Spotify, Paint.net, and Visual Studio Code. So besides the new features, there's added on features which work differently now to the previous features that existed in previous versions of Windows. And for example, a few extra options in Snip and Sketch, 
Windows 10 also now supports raw images natively such as CR2 and CRW for Canon, NEF for Nikon, RAF for Fuji, DNG for Sony, etc. The library is provided by Libraw.org and Windows Defender now has tamper protection and application guard and you can now set the default tab in Task Manager. Also your downloads in Windows Explorer are now sorted and categorized by date with recent first by default on the downloads page itself. Now onto the next section of Windows Installer. Windows 10 setup background is now white instead of purple. Cortana is now silent by default in the Windows Installer. Thank. Also in apps and features, more apps are now uninstallable such as 3D Viewer, Calculator, Calendar, Groove Music, Mail, Movies and TV, Paint 3D, Snip and Sketch, Sticky Notes and Voice Recorder. If you're building a new PC also you'll now need 32 gigabytes of minimum disk space existing devices won't be affected. And Windows Update has received some improvements in my opinion. Windows 10 Pro can defer updates now by up to 365 days. You can also now pause updates from previous Windows Updates page and you can now pause all those updates on Windows 10 by up to 35 days before you must install the latest updates after which you can pause again. But other than that, Windows can now automatically uninstall updates if your PC can't boot after updating. Updates will still not update during the active hours, but Windows can now automatically adjust your active hours based on your device history too. So if it detects that there's a low season during the day automatically for doing work, it can then update during those times. But this of course will enable a background service, which I'm not a big fan of personally, if it's not already enabled. Now onto the last of optimizations in terms of firstly Windows Narrator. They've apparently optimized and improved this. I had never used Narrator so I wouldn't know. Windows will now remember also your brightness regardless of if you're plugged in or off battery which is pretty interesting for Windows tablet or laptop users especially on these low power devices. So you may want to play around with this setting especially if you're using this on the go a lot and you quickly change the brightness. There is a huge difference between having your brightness on max and on low brightness for a laptop mobility and battery usage. But focus assist now turns on by default when using full screen apps and some Cortana tweaks and changes have been made to settings. A brightness slider is now also visible in the action center. Sorry if that was quick, there was a mountain of different features and updates and things to get through, but now the last section is the problems that are present. And the first one being display brightness may not respond to adjustments. This also can occur in nightlight. I had a weird problem where I set automatically and then I turned it off and it just kept the brightness on even though it was like 4 p.m. here. So that's kind of a little bit of a bug at the moment. I'm sure they'll update that soon, but audio not working with Dolby Atmos headphones and home theater. This is another problem that's been identified. There's also duplicate folders and documents showing in a user profile. And the next one I've encountered personally, and that is if you've got a USB storage device attached or an SD card through a memory card reader attached, and you're trying to update to 1903, then it won't let you update. So you gotta remove that then restart the update process again, which thankfully it doesn't remove all your downloads like it has in the past. But the next problem that is known is unable to discover or connect to Bluetooth devices. Next up, if you're on Intel audio device, it can display some weird error like door.sys notification. And then sometimes there can be intermediate loss of Wi-Fi connectivity too and an AMD RAID driver incompatibility also exists. Next up in the line, older versions of BattleEye anti-cheat software sometimes can be incompatible. And these are for Fortnite and also PUBG, for example, these games do use this anti-cheat system. So if you are having problems, you will want to update to the latest. And then last up on the line is direct 3D applications on rotated displays may have trouble going into full screen mode. And besides that, that is all the features and changes in Windows 10 1903. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. Also, if you wanna keep seeing content like this, the optimization guides, be sure to hit that sub button, ring the bell to get the videos as soon as they drop. Also, if you want a cheap Windows 10 Pro key, check out today's video sponsor, SCD Keys. Link's in the description below. With that aside, I'll catch you in the next tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.
See, now you can quickly spam those annoying emojis to your friends, or you can put on the bro fist if you want to. Then spam a heap of bro fists. PewDiePie! <laughs>